tales from the bungalow, timeless is the night. The doctor's waiting room was crowded. In the office, the old doctor stood idle by the window, looking out his glazed turned to the weather beaded single, shingle on the skatepost. Michael Everett, M.D. Just below there was another gleaming new Michael Everett the third M.D. The young man seated by the desk was a cardboard copy of his grandfather. His glance was fond, his voice confident as he spoke. Believe me, I have learned one fact, and nothing that medical science can't do, can't explain. The old doctor turned away from the window. Nothing that science can't explain, he asked. His voice was the voice of a wise man, based in a lifetime of memories. How long ago it was, how short a time it seems. I too was a proud, confident of the powers of science. I was new in town, full of my medical knowledge. I couldn't sleep nights waiting for my first call. I knew it would come, and it did. A night, of course. When my doorbell rang that night, I lit from my bed to answer. At the door, there was no one, not a soul. But on the threshold, I found a note, and fifteen minutes later, I had a cell for the hall, large house of Silver Hill. The patient was rich and beautiful, hair was blacker than coal, against the satin coverlet of her bed, a face whiter than milk, her lungs were labouring, but thank heaven, there was still time to head off her pneumonia. Pitifully, Gail cried out, Doctor, save me. I don't want to die as gently as I could. I comforted her, wrote up my prescription. You'll be fine. Fine, I promised confidently. So I know just the way to save your life. Send one of my servants for this medicine. They stopped to see you first thing in the morning. Next day, I went back to Silver Hill. I was whistling. I turned the corner of the house. Strange. Cold old grown with tangled weeds. The house suddenly had stopped, shot, breathless. A lighter day in a house of grey, broken, crumbling. The old ruin of space, a single night. A head tapped on my shoulder, I turned quickly. My old man had come up from the street. Who be you? And what do you ask, the son? He asked. This place had been deserted for ten years. His voice, my voice grew loud and wild. What do you mean? Hear me, old fool. I was in there myself last night. The old man replied was like the crackle of a parrot. There ain't been anybody lying living there for ten years. Come on, and see for yourselves. Inside the riches, this was gone. Grim soot remained. One thing more, the smell of death. I remembered the way to the girl's room. Deserted, bed was broken, empty. The emptiness of years, ten years. Behind me, the old man bubbled. Ain't no been been living here since the purity your mistress died. All at once I was down on my knees on the floor, bending over a scrape of clean white paper. I couldn't pick it up, I couldn't look at it, yet I couldn't bear to tear my eyes away. I was shaking uncontrollably. My voice was a shout for help. Here, old one, here. This is the prescription I wrote to my patient last night. In my own handwriting, the old doctor turned back to the window, but could do it in a chair by the office desk. The young Dr. Michael Everett was silent.